Vicky Bello Vlog! Yay! Yeah! Yeah! Well, so as usual, kinidnap ko na naman yung aking guests because you know, it's so much easier to just do it this way because we plan pa. I don't know, it's not spontaneous. So I think I have the most authentic, spontaneous vlog. Yun na lang, kasi I don't have the most viewers, right? But let's welcome someone who I haven't seen in such a long time. Actually, I do see her, but very short conversations. I miss the time that we were together for several days in Milan. Can you guess who it is? Welcome, Catriona! Okay. You know, we have something in common besides being beauty queens. Ah! <laughs> no, we are both only children. And I really feel a connection with her because I can see how much she loves her parents. I really do. And I saw your last, you know, it brought a tear to my eye because I really miss my dad. And I see. So at the moment, you still have a complete set. A complete set. So your dad is now how old? He just turned the ripe old age of 78. 78? Yeah. And he was here. He's not yes. here. Your mom's with you, but yes. your dad's usually not. With you. But you know, we were in Milan. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We were in Milan. Like, like a world ago. March. Are you in March? 2020. We went March 2020, and we yes. came home when I arrived in the airport here. Cause you stay on my day because you attended lunch in Milan. Yeah. But I arrived March 3, and I was shocked because in the airport it was oh, all about so COVID. Na yes. when we were there, parang party time, mm -hmm. but nobody had a mask. And sabi ko, kung sa akin naman dito parang party. <laughs> but there was a breakout. Oh. 30 minutes away from Milan, right. then they locked down Milan when mm -hmm. we left. They just didn't do it because it's fashion week. Yes. So I was so Crazy. worried about it because it's a good And then all these people from fashion week, they went to Paris. They didn't know what to do. So it's weird. Yeah. Well, it hadn't really set in here in the Philippines, funnily enough. Like, we came out of like there being a lot of, I guess, high alert in Milan. And then when we came to the Philippines, there was no lockdowns yet, there was no barring specific flights, so it was kind of everyone's just kind of tiptoeing like what's going on. What's going on? But that's, they announced March 13 and like a week, the Cerrado Philippines. Mm -hmm. So in that time, you didn't get to see your parents. So was your mom with you and your no, dad? No, my parents were in Australia. Oh, so no. that was a really hard time for me because obviously we're so close and it's a time of such unpredictability. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, he's a warrior. So a warrior, not a warrior, but a warrior as in he worried a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, and he was really scared that he'd never see me again. Like he really oh worried so much that he's like, I'm never gonna see my daughter again. She's never come, gonna come home. Something's gonna happen. Like, so it was a really tough time for us as a family. Um, I was able to go back end of, or mid-2021 and I still have to do a 14-day quarantine in a hotel room. Adelaide. It was horrible. Yeah, yeah. You're in Adelaide? This yes. was, you know, Crystal was living in Adelaide. Yes, she said, she you can talk to me. She lived the sweet there. I am. She told me to be inside. She sent me what? She sent me wine. Woo! <laughs> wine, um, also candles, mm -hmm. and, like bath salts. It was so sweet. Oh, that's cool. Did you see her? You didn't get I to wasn't see. able to because my flight was booked the day after I got out of the party. So, so you're 14 straight. days quarantine in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. Ah, and then you fly somewhere else. Yes, to Perth. Okay, Perth. well, when you were in Milan, she never made me quite a lot of sound. So was there a sound <laughs> then? No, not yet. Ah, yeah. Well, okay, so kind of wala siyang... Uh-uh, friends not coming. So can I at least ask where you guys met and stuff? When you yeah, so actually we've known okay. of each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of mutual friends. When I first did Bini Bini, uh, my stylist there, Tom Lau, mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's also his stylist. So we had a lot of common friends in common. Um, but it wasn't until I think end of 2018 where I had gone to Japan with Ericsson, who is now my manager and Sam's manager. Uh, we went and then he's like, oh, have you gone to church lately? Let's go to favorite church. So I went with Ericsson and Don and then I met Sam again there. Um, and then we just happened to run in similar circles. So it's not like love at first sight. No, never. <laughs> it's friendship. Um, not even friendship in the beginning. It was just common people. Um, but it was something that definitely grew over a long, long time. Well, I love the fact that you're both Christians, right? Yeah. That's all. Guys, what's that advice? You it's wonderful to have a Christian boyfriend. It is. Like, at first, before I was Christian, because I definitely didn't grow up Christian, I didn't understand all of the rules or the boundaries that are meant to be put in place for young Christian couples. But as you grow up, I really understand why they're there. They're there to protect you and to guide you because it really does guard your heart in the most amazing way. Um, and also to be supported by a community. 
such as the one that you find at church is really different. It's just so nice to be together with someone you're not making cheese meat. We're just talking about the Lord. But you know what Hayden says about Christianity is that yes, there are rules, but it's pretty wide. And if you say this yeah. out, it's actually when you go outside the rules that you get into trouble. It's true. Oh, uh, so uh, anyway, try it. A little bit. I really appreciate that there's just a real big emphasis on a relationship with God, not so much having to go through the motions of going to church and saying certain prayers and just kind of ceremoniously doing it, I guess. Um, so I just really enjoy that emphasis on like, you're supposed to be able to pray as if you're having a conversation with yeah, that's what I do all the time anyway, so now it's legit. Yeah. Because when you're an only child, like my best friend is Jesus. I had no other, you know, yeah. there's somebody in the house, so I talk to him, mm. and I thought, this is crazy, <laughs> but now it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, her dream is coming true right now. I see on all these concerts, so when I talk to Katriona, hindi naman, she doesn't really want to be an actress nor a model, but I think you like me. A host, yeah, correct. Hosting, and sure. then you like sing. So the hosting yeah. winner, how was the Miss Universe? And oh my god, that's one of Huli Yon Grabe. So I don't like that. They're very controversial that Aww. you showed your emotions. So what yeah. happened? Well, I think that's a great opportunity because I'm not a main host, I was a correspondent. So there is more of a leeway in terms of showing personality and I guess a little bit of an emotion as well. Um, I was also very shocked. Yeah. You know that you wait. You said when you you were I'm gonna want when you competed. <laughs> my God, but a winner kind of from the beginning oh, to the end. Did you lose at all, or of you course. just walk with so much? I don't want this. It's done. No, definitely not. I was uh, super nervous, and also I never took a day for granted. I feel like a pageant in pageantry, especially when you're competing internationally, you have to really have endurance because. Well, my competition, I know this one was only 10 days, but mine was almost 17 days. Okay. Um, so every day I wanted to like be at my top of my game. And that's quite tiring because you have such long hours, you wake up early just to do your glam. Uh, Mids and your interviews, you're staring at lights all day, or you're on stage, you're standing for rehearsals for hours. So it can be quite tiring. It's really a mind game, right? It's super a mind game. So the physical is everybody's kind of there, but it's the strength of the mind. Because you physically, do? everyone's beautiful. Like, uh -huh. honestly, everyone's beautiful. Everyone has gorgeous bodies, and even styling is really elevated nowadays. Like, you see really well-dressed candidates who can walk well. So it's really just that stuff in between that I think is the best. It's getting harder but every year. I feel like, no, not necessarily. I mean, I feel standards always being pushed of what can be expected of the girls because I don't think before especially not having social media back then now there's such a huge pressure on the girls especially like a Philippine candidate to always do well and to exceed everyone who came before her um, it's a lot of pressure um, but I always think that it also depends on the judges so to this year out is all women yes so you, what do you think that what happens there when it's all women? It depends, because like, I mean, I've done judging before in other countries and also even in the province here. Sometimes, as a judge, I'm sitting there and it'll graduate to like the top cut and I'll be lo looking around at my fellow judges like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it really happens. I mean, people define beauty differently. People think, oh, that's a great question or answer. And someone else might say, oh, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of that. So it really depends. And that's the element of surprise, I guess, that's there. When did you know you were going to win? When you won? When I won. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very humble, that sort of thing. So tell me about your singing career in Amanda. Oh, I just signed with UMG, okay. Republic Records here in the Philippines. So that's really exciting. It's a new partnership. Mm -hmm. So hopefully going to create new music out of that. We have a few concerts coming up as well. Oh, um, where? In the US. And also oh, so in Canada. Do you do things in the Philippines? Why are you always abroad? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, definitely stuff coming up. Uh, nothing that's concrete yet because it's all just fluid and getting planned out, but definitely. We'll do some concerts here in the Philippines. Do you make your own songs? Yeah, I write a lot. Uh, um, did you write the song for Sam? I did. Well, okay. it's not for sure? him. It's about him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Singing out, describe Sam to us Aww. and why you fell in love with him. I feel like I was so guarded and apprehensive when I first met Sam. But he is just such a gentle and patient person that he really made me feel safe with him. Like I've never felt that he wanted to use who I was or that I'm a public figure. I mean, he's a public figure too, but when you become, you know, Miss Universe, like a year or two years later, people still regard you as that. It's kind of that hesitancy of like, does this person like me for me? 
or do they just want to be associated with me because of the title? Uh -huh. um, but he always made me feel safe. He never made me feel like he was trying to use that to his advantage or anything. And we just have such similar values, one being our faith, two being we're super family oriented. He really made an effort with my family and my friends. Did your parents like him right away? Uh, right away, I think. <laughs> they were a little bit, you know, just wanting to know him a bit more. But once they got to know him, they really loved him. So with our engagement, they're super over the moon as well. Okay, so no, no. Your dad didn't take you aside and say, No. Yeah, are you sure? Yeah, so I actually have a video when um, right after the proposal happened, and my dad is like tearing up because he's so happy. Oh. And I look back and it makes me so emotional. So your father, are you his only child? He didn't have a marriage. No, he has two uh, sons from his first marriage. Oh, okay, so. Um, they're quite older than me. We're not that close because mm -hmm. we didn't grow up together. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but I am his only girl. And what about Sam's family? What are they like? Oh, they're wonderful. I spend time with his mom. His dad, I was able to spend a little bit of time with when we went for Christmas end of 2021. Um, but since his dad has since passed. Oh, no, okay. um, so I'm grateful I was able to spend just a little bit of time with his family. Um, but his mom also visited here, his sister as well, his mga pamangkin. Uy, Tagalog is so much better now. Ano nangyayari? Are you in some practicing? He always blames me for his bad Tagalog. <laughs> in a joking way, naman. Oh. Um, but no, his family is great. So we're all just really, really happy. So when is the wedding? Oh, God. On oh, the next year. Okay, good. So, yeah, again, I just want to enjoy this season. It's really, it's, it's a once in a lifetime season. Uh -huh. So. Yeah, I always tell people don't be in a hurry. People live a lot longer these days. Do you have any advice for me? What? Well, my advice to you is to always make Jesus the third person in your relationship because you know he and I of course have problems, but but we both pray, right. and then it sticks. So it just happens to be that way. And I think when you have such a level head, I mean you're such a level head person, but enjoy this because. One year of engagement, even two, mm -hmm. would be a wonderful time to get to know yeah. each other. And then when you have your wedding, but in stages, let's say before they used to get married young because they only lived till about 50, 60. <laughs> but people now that are, nowadays that we live till 80 and everything's so fast, it's really nice to take time to start yeah. the process. Mm -hmm. So, do you know where you're getting married? Philippines now or abroad? I don't know yet. Weddings. <laughs> And you can find my favorite and who did this one? It's very pretty. This is just Debbie Cole. Um, uh, yeah, for my stylist mirror. Oh Aww. you like bright colors? I do. I love color. Oh okay, good. Yeah. So obviously so oh, yeah, I love this dress as well. So how many kids? Oh my gosh. <laughs> but, uh, maybe two. Two? Yeah. You're exact boy and girl and you so. I, well, I just want a girl. If it's two girls, I'm happy. If it's a girl and a boy, I'm happy. If it's two Why boys, do you want a girl? and I get three. <laughs> Because I'm so close to my mom, mm -hmm. and I just I really love our relationship together. And I would just my heart would just burst having a little girl, and then her being so close to her daughter. Oh, okay. Is your yeah. mom excited? My mom's she doesn't admit it, but I feel like she's excited. I want a whole already. <laughs> <laughs> she never says that, but I feel like she's gonna be the best mom. Your mom and you are you more friends or is it a mother daughter thing? Because you're both kind of Almost, yeah, actually, but we're definitely mother and daughter, but she really is my best friend. We always confide in each other about everything. She always asks for advice from me and vice versa. I always ask for advice from her. She's the first person that I'll talk to if I need to like think but about But okay, so you went through a troublesome period. Did you listen to your mom then? I mean, she didn't know. I always thought I'd listen to my mom. So, in your past relationship, did she say that? that <laughs> and she's not, it's not good for you, Hola? I mean, she did. She definitely said, you know, are you sure uh, when it came to past relationships? But I think she also knew the value of me learning my own lessons and living my own life. Oh, okay. So I thought spirit. that was very interesting because I don't know if, I, if my daughter were to do the same thing that I'd let her. Um, but yeah, my mom always told me it's always important to make, make your own choices mm -hmm. and that you learn your lessons on your own. No. And looking back, it's like it's true. I learned my lesson eventually. Suck it, no, you know. You have lots of pain. <laughs> true, but um, I really admire that about my mom. That she really raised me to be an independent free thinker as well. Okay, now the new owner of Miss Universe. I'm very curious about her. Mm. Here, so when, did you get to meet her? Yes, I did. I went did to Thailand. Did you get to know her? Oh yeah, you were in Thailand. Was she yes. already? Yes. 
thought she. No, she was the owner at that time. You came when you won? No. No, 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 no. Um, we, I went to Thailand. What year was that? 2022. Last year. Last year. Um, it was like a launch event. Um, okay. So there were a few other former Miss Universes there. There's about five of us all in total. And of course, Harnas, who was reigning back then, Miss right? India for like 2021. Um, but yeah, I was able to meet her. We weren't able to spend a lot of time in terms of bonding or getting to know. But she was there at the event. And how is it going to change the Miss Universe landscape? I think it'll be interesting to see because I think the changes are really going to hit this year. Uh, because when I was hosting as a correspondent at the beginning of January of this year, um, that was actually kind of the tail end of IMG. So it was still their production. Uh -huh. So this new one, at the, it's El Salvador, now, at the end of the year, will be completely under the new ownership. So I'm really curious. I think as curious as everyone else to see yeah, how it's going to play out. Yeah, you how is it going to I heard something like she would make it a reality show. Oh, really? Hear that also. No. But that would be great because we want to see everything that's happening with yeah. this universe. Anyway, why do Thai people love you so much? Ooh. I mean, when you were there, the Thai people were cheering you on. So I was weird. watching the audience. What was that so all about? The, the Thai audiences were very sweet to me when I was competing there. I Maybe it had to do with uh, when I was modeling back when I was younger. I lived in Thailand for three months. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but I didn't really make a name for myself there. Uh -huh. um, but I don't know, they were just very endearing to me. Uh, they even gave me a nickname of Myung Meow, which means lady cat. Myung Meow? Myung Meow. Okay, so give me a message for for your dad, your mom, and for oh. Sam. Okay, well, for my parents, I love you guys so much. Uh, I really enjoyed spending time with you, and I'm already counting down the days until we get to spend time again together. Um, and of course, to my love, Sam, I love you very much. I love you. <laughs> oh, what's your pet name? Panda. Panda? And yeah. mine's Koala. Oh, okay, because you're Australian. Yeah. Nico gets a panda. Yeah, there's no reason why. But it's not sexy, Yanka. The panda. It's bear hug. Yeah, it's It's just something that's stuck. So this why. girl is really a little girl at heart, diba? Yeah. Right? Really I'm a little girl at heart, but also an old soul. It's a very strange combination. And is he like a very uh, fatherly kind of person? Very, I know you feel He's very young spirited. Oh, okay. He's actually, he encourages me to be more spontaneous. Because uh, he's more you are not spontaneous. No, no, I'm not. Now you are more to do this interview that's spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I know when you're funny, you're always thinking and assessing. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, just that. like that. But yeah, anyway. he's, he's teaching me to be more spontaneous. Go with it. Well, opposites always do better. Oh, yeah, well, because it keeps it. And you need to make him also more. Exactly. Yeah. Because sometimes he gets himself into trouble, so you should be a little more. Yeah, but we help yes. each other out. Anyway, I'm so happy that your life is going so Thank well. You. I'm so proud of you that you're getting renowned worldwide. Imagine being you know, from this universe. That's great. I hope you continue to be there. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to interview you. Love you guys. Love Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye. Don't yeah. forget. Remember to like, subscribe, and whatever. Comment down below. <laughs> <laughs>